we can't ignore the fact that Lorena Gonzalez, whose seat uh, you are seeking, has announced a bid for mayor. Yes. Um, did you choose this seat with the belief that she would not run again? Yes. Well, I chose a seat that I thought would be most likely to be open. And uh, Teresa Mosqueda had already announced that she was going to run for re-election. That left the other citywide positions. So that is why I ran for this one. Can, can I ask you, not that it's about your campaign, but do you think Lorena Gonzalez is uh, a good choice for mayor? I think that her record, her legacy on city council would indicate that um, that we need somebody for mayor who's able to address the problems that she has not been able to really move forward since she's been uh, president of the council or even before that when she was when she first got elected. So let's talk a little bit about your priorities. You had mentioned, you know, small a business owner, um, you know, at a time when you have so many businesses in the city that are struggling yeah. to bring that perspective. Um, in 2019, uh, candidates that were considered more business friendly for the council did not fare well, uh, as you know. Do you expect that to be different two years later? I do. I believe that economic recovery is top of mind for, for, for most Seattleites when they see their neighborhood restaurant going under uh, and they see uh, their friends out of work. I do believe that um, people recognize that uh, business means jobs and we've got to bring jobs back to Seattle. We've got to bring jobs back to the downtown core and resources flowing back into the city budget because that's how we pay for uh, the, the basic services that keep this city functioning. Uh, Well-maintained roads and bridges, clean parks, first responders. These are the things that really matter. That's the, that's the job of city government. And I do believe that people make that connection between uh, the value of, of a healthy business community and what people want to see in their, in their city government, the, the services that they need and the priorities that I think that most Seattleites agree on. This is a city that loves to label people. Um, you know, if you dare speak out about the homelessness crisis, you're a NIMBY. You know, if you if you raise concerns about uh, rioting or unrest, you know, you're you're in the pocket of the police. So, how do you, in this climate, in this city, try to address what are clear problems: homelessness, the state of downtown, the crime issue, without being labeled, you know, right wing or having them uh, label you as a as a NIMBY, which some people you know, I grab a hold of and run with? I think the best way is to lead with values. Articulate the values that you bring to office and that you want to, um, that you want to realize through policy. Because I do believe that Seattleites, for the most part, share the same core values. We want healthy communities. We want a sense of economic um, security. We want jobs. We want the people in our communities that are the most vulnerable to have uh, the opportunity to succeed. So when you talk about values and what you're going to do to, to realize those values, then you sidestep some of these labels and some of the finger pointing and can really roll up your sleeves and, and work toward effective workable solutions. Let me do a quick round robin on a couple issues so viewers know where you stand. Do you support defunding the Seattle Police Department uh, by 50%? I think that that is the wrong approach. That is a slogan without a plan and without wide community input and will not make our communities safer. Do you support leaving homeless individuals in place or do you support what some people refer to as sweeps? I think that we need to get away from talking about the homeless as a monolithic block because these are individuals with very different needs. They've ended up homeless because maybe they've fled an abusive partner, maybe they've lost a job and can't pay rent, maybe they're struggling with addiction, mental illness. And so first and foremost, when, when you ask me that question, we really do have to get a sense of who are the people we're talking about? and to answer your question, if we're talking about uh, people that are living unsheltered in, in encampments that do pose a public health crisis to uh, themselves, their communities, public safety um, risk, then we have to think about uh, moving them onto 
other housing solutions in providing them the services that we need. What we're doing now right now is a humanitarian and a policy failure. So I don't see things as either or. I see things as let's let's try a different model. Let's try something new because clearly this is not working. Oh. Um, do you support the tax on high paying jobs that the city council put into place? I'm glad you said jobs because right now that's my top priority. And I'm concerned that that piece of legislation, which was passed during a pandemic and is one of the largest taxes in, 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 in recent history, I am concerned about what that is going to do for the jobs downtown uh, and across the city, because ultimately we're not just talking about targeting large businesses because the business community is an ecosystem and the supply chain partners that uh, that work with these large companies, they're going to suffer. So let's, let's focus on jobs and, and whatever impact, whatever policy has on whether or not um, we're going to bring them back or uh, make them go away.